said the land across the sea where man and woman live happy but me home go always be Diana. Diana. we're going to be having a chat with dr paloma mohammed so dr mohammed how are you today well i'm good <laughs> usual day <laughs> How is the heat treating you outside? Uh, well, it's I haven't been uh, walking around in the heat yet. Um, mm -hmm. This is kind of my first engagement for the day. But I d I'm not good with heat. Uh, I, I don't like it at all. So, we're going to be asking you some very fun questions. And this one is a personal one for me. I haven't a clue where you're from. <laughs> so, where did you grow up? I grew up um, in Kitty and Sobrianville. Um, mm -hmm. I was born in, in Dowden Street, Kitty, and uh, grew up at Pike Street, just across the, the way from Sewak Shop. Mm -hmm. And then I went to live in William Street, and then I spent the rest of my life, um, teenage life, in, um, in Sobrianville, Fourth in, Avenue. In Sobrianville. Yeah. So you're a Georgetown girl through and through. Yeah, well, not really, because my mom, um, my mom's mother, you know, when she came from St. Lucia, my mom is not Guyanese, she's French. Mm -hmm. So when they came, they lived in Mahaika. Mm -hmm. And so I spent a lot of my summers in, in Mahaika, running up and down on the beach and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, I'm not exactly a city girl. <laughs> <laughs> tell, but, but tell me about your memories of Georgetown from, from very early on. Is it a lot different now? Is there something yeah, that you I miss? Mean, I'm, I'm not a lot older than I look, I think, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, and and my memories of Georgetown. I mean, I've been here a lot. I mean, spent a couple of years, fifteen years or so, out of Guyana. Mm -hmm. um, but um, some of the things in Guyana I still remember. Like, for instance, Ramakrishna School, where I went to school, um, mm -hmm. and Holy um, Rosary, where I also went to school. Oh, I I actually yeah. heard of that. Yeah, yeah, it's in David Street. It still yes, exists. still, it's still church. exists. Yes. Church school, and um, so that still exists, and and and, and Kitty Market and the community center where I spent a lot of my young days, um, you know, you know, involved in all kinds of things in the community center. Just a couple of days ago, we were talking about it and how it's run down because that place used to be open, and I remember mm -hmm. um, uh, a lot of my friends and I, like Mark Abrams and so on, would just go in there, and we would do all kinds of things on the weekends. We would practice dancing, singing, drama. Mm -hmm to have these long philosophical discussions. discussions. And it was just open, any mm -hmm. any child could go in. But of course, there's all, there's now the development of buildings and roads and, and all kinds of other infrastructure that have taken place over the past 30 years or so. So it's it's the same, but it's different. It's it? Now, your mom, you said, is originally from St. Lucia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about that. Um, your house just sounds like a culture pot happening there. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about how you know you dealt with the bit of her culture that would have been passed on and the whole, you know, the Guyanese culture present in your house. And well, I've, I've just started to write actually about the, the influence of my mother um, on my life as, a, as an artist, a frustrated artist herself. Mm -hmm. um, and my father, who was actually a painter, that's how come I got the name Paloma, right? Because he named me after Paloma Picasso. Wow. Right, which is Picasso's daughter. So mm -hmm. so that's uh, that was always art, art and art, arts, artistic endeavor was always around me. But my mother was, um, you know, kind of a dancer and a musician. That's where she, and but, but she also, more importantly than that, she wrote, mm -hmm. and so my early performances on Ancho Young Guyana and so on, where it was you know, my mother writing poetry for me to recite, to recite yeah. and um, teaching those to me. Um, my earliest memory of doing that is about four or five years old. Mm -hmm. And um, in that sense, I kind of, I think I grew up in the public eye in Guyana because there were all these avenues for young, y young kids. Um, you know, you went on to teens with after, you know, and you had all these things on radio in those days that young people could go, and so the whole country would know, you know, th you know, these kids are there. But in terms of the other important role that she played, my mother was the French translator for Wordsworth MacAndrew, and I don't know if um, how many people remember Wordsworth MacAndrew, but he's the one who wrote Old High. Yes, and yes. Did a lot, a lot of work um, documenting um, Guyanese folkways. Yeah. 
Um, so anything he would document, so from Kali Mai Puja to the, mm -hmm. the, the La Rose Festival, oral tradition. And, right, um, um, language, masquerade, you name it. And my mother basically was the one who worked with him and transcribed a lot of his tapes. Mm -hmm. um, and I was growing up literally as a small child sitting in the, around the house hearing these tapes playing over and mm -hmm. over. I actually recently wrote um, a poem, well, a series of poems um, about that. Um, and, and I think it's very interesting because I never thought about that until when I got into my you know, mid-20s. Uh -huh. And then I started to actually write and, be, and kind of rekindle an interest in Guyanese um, folk. And yes. I couldn't figure out where it came from because it was so far removed from anything I was doing mm -hmm. and from my own education. Because in Guyana, we don't, we tend to kind of pejoratize those things that are folk and that are indigenous and kind yes, of privileged yes. things that are Western. And so you have to have a radical education in order to kind of infuse, you know, what is ours. And I couldn't understand based on how I was educated. Mm -hmm. um, at least formally educated, yes, that is, yes. um, where this was coming from, where this passion, where this interest was coming from. And eventually, after kind of psychoanalyzing myself, <laughs> I came back to, you know, remembering that it was mom yeah. and these tapes and all of the work that she was doing when I was so young. You I'm, I'm curious now, yeah. tell me about the the books you remember from your very early life. What were some of the books, you know, you could walk through your house and just find them? I did normal books, um, all kinds of books. Um, my own books, I, I grew up on the normal stables. I, I unfortunately, Enid Blyton, mm -hmm. Barbara Cartland, which I read voraciously. <laughs> which, um, yeah. I, to, I mean, I probably read a hundred more, thousands of Barbara Cartlands, all these, you know, kind of romance novels, Mills and Boots. Did, I was but about to ask about those Mills and things. Things. <laughs> Yeah, man. I got into a lot of trouble at Queen's College for reading Mills and Boots <laughs> on the desk and this and that. You could read two of those in a day if you're lucky. So, I mean, I was a voracious reader. But then we also, I also read a lot of other things. Um, so I would read history books. Um, I would read books about art. I mm -hmm. would read, um, at one point in my life, I'd read a lot of biographies, um, um, which I love. And, and up to the like today, I just love biographies. And um, I read a lot of books on, on God, a lot of religious books, books about yeah. different religious systems and um, a lot of books about um, kind of metaphysical subjects as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I was just reading anything that came, came, came by. by. Mm -hmm. um, but what I was not getting my hands on was books about what Guyanese things. And right? yeah, you, a, you a question it, you know? about that. Yeah. So I, 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 I want to believe that there's more or less, there has been a war between Western culture and our own Creole culture. Mm -hmm. Do you think that our, you know, oral traditions are currently at risk of dying? And how do we get literature to children? Literature that say, listen, you're not growing up in a place where people are blue-eyed and blonde-haired and mm -hmm. it's snowing, but you're growing up in the tropics where it's green, mm -hmm. where it's hot, and where this is life. Well, yeah, well, oral tradition is always at risk because of the fact it's oral. Mm -hmm. And so, if, if it's not documented and preserved in some way and, and, and some mm -hmm. conscious effort is not made to do that, it's just going to go away with the last person who remembers it, right? Yes, yes. So that's always going to be a, 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 an issue. And then, but then once you start to document it, mm -hmm. then the, it loses a particular kind of dynami dynamism and a certain, s a certain number of qualities. So that's always, you know, what to do, you know, the balance between that. But we need to start documenting and um, researching yeah. and documenting. So that's a very big thing, and that's one of my big passions. It's an area of work that I do and I encourage my students to do mm -hmm. um, so that we can actually leave things for people to work on and to kind of develop from. So what would do we, how do we get uh, children to, or, or other people, not even children, yeah. to kind of access this is to not only document but to make the documentation accessible mm -hmm. and so this can be through just talks through websites through books yeah through plays through films um through I infusions into the uh into the education system um so i mean any way that you usually educate people <laughs> well, that's that's yeah. not rocket science mm -hmm. it is to actually create the content Right, that's really difficult. Mm -hmm. We know how to what channels to use all the time, but it's to create the content. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
how, how do you think um, our contemporary writers, Guyanese and regionally as well, how do you think they've been handling that stitching in of our landscape into the literature? I think there's a new crop of writers. Well, the older, older crop ha ha has kind of always been doing that, but there were more, a lot of them, not all of them, mm -hmm. n a number of them were more interested in the colonial um, nationalist experience and experiments and so that that generation uh, kind of has made way for some new writers now who are actually seriously um, addressing the same deficit that mm -hmm. we are talking about which is how how is our environment how does our way of life how does our folk and our folk ways um, kind of invest the culture and invest um, who we are and this kind of question of identifying those things and what's important what and what's not. What's happening now though is there's a contestation between what is, who is, who is folk, whose work, whose work. voice yes. is going to get um, privileged, right? And this is something that I am recognizing and trying to work in in a kind of a, a way as well to kind of undermine the, the kind of predominance of a single voice, voice in, yeah. in, 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 in the literature um, and in drama and in film because we mm. are many peoples, right? Yeah, it's, so it's yeah. yeah. We're culturally plural, so yeah. it's, it simply yeah. doesn't yeah. explain that we, we can't have yeah. one voice explaining yeah. us. Mm -hmm. um, so, another personal question, and, and, and I, I so know. So far, I haven't asked many personal questions. I, I you know. <laughs> I asked you one about, you, yeah. you'll be surprised how many people <laughs> don't know that you actually grew up in Georgetown. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, you recently were awarded. Now, I know you don't like to talk about your personal achievements, but I'd like you to tell us a little bit about that most recent award. Well, which one are you talking about? Uh, I got two awards this year. Uh -huh. I got an uh, Anthony Sabga Award out mm -hmm. of Trinidad yes. um, in April, yeah. and that was the Caribbean uh, Excell Award for Excellence mm -hmm. in Arts and Letters. Myself and another Guyanese, uh, Dr. Suresh Narayan, who got it for Science and Science. Technology. Uh -huh. And then I got... Uh, my second national award, which is um, this time it was an arrow of achievement a couple of weeks ago. So which mm -hmm. one of those are you talking about? Oh, I was about talking about the national award. The national award, right. the later one. Well, um, I can't say anything about that except thank you to whoever it is that, <laughs> that saw it necessary to uh -huh. give me an award because I, I, I was ne not told why I was given that award or nobody asked me, you know, any questions about, you know, about what I was doing. So I assume that somebody was um, pretty much looking to see what I was doing for a long period of time, and um, and you know thought it was it was something mm -hmm. that was worthy of um, some kind of recognition, but but I just want to say that I received a nas another national award in twenty ten or twenty eleven I don't recall, mm -hmm. um, but uh, from the government of Ghana as well for work in the arts and education. And um, that was a medal of service as well. So this one has gotten a lot of attention. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, I, I maybe it's because there were so many people listening and watching the, 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 the um, inauguration. I, I sense yeah. a new spirit of nationalism <laughs> lurking among us. Yeah. So I want, to, I want to blame it on that new spirit of nationalism. Maybe. It's fascinating, um, actually. But, but now that we've, we've mentioned the uh, Sagba Award, yeah. tell me a little about that, the, the significance of it. Yeah, I think that is, that is a pretty significant award. Not to say that the National Award is not significant, because mm -hmm. I think um, a lot of times so many people do not get recognized in their own homelands, and yes. that is always going to be more important to me than anything else. Mm -hmm. So um, the Sabga, because it, is, it pitches at a, a Caribbean level, that's, it was um, a competitive award, so um, there were, you were competing with people from all across the Caribbean in these same areas, and, and it's a very rigorous, very long um, mm -hmm. nominations process. There is a, a country nominations team, then it has to go to a, a Caribbean nominations team, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then they start weeding out, and then they, it goes to a, an eminent persons panel, which is made up of 15 people, from all across the Caribbean and the world, yes, uh, and then they bring it down to the last few, and then you know, then they they they, they, they I guess they 
evaluate the CVs and the work that people have done. Mm -hmm. But that award comes with, with a f fairly significant amount of money mm -hmm. um, that um, can help you to do a lot of things that you want to do. You can use it personally if you want, but you can use it also to further your work, which is what I have chosen to do. Um, and more importantly, the SABGA machinery is designed to kind of highlight the work of these laureates um, in relation to the Caribbean and yes. their own countries so that it, there's a marketing machinery that goes behind it. So it means, therefore, that anything that you're doing positively mm -hmm. um, is going to benefit from that within the year or yes. two. Well, I'm laureate for two years um, that you are laureate. So that was um, a very welcome um, and very unexpected as well kind of um, boon, I think. <laughs> Um, and, and you know, all of this has more or less um, turned you into an icon, and I'm not just, mm. uh, I know you don't like the term, but I'm quoting it from the existing literature, <laughs> recent <laughs> literature, so I, I would have Googled you, mm. and everybody is so excited, you know, mm -hmm. here is a Guyanese woman, here is somebody finally rep representing Guyana on the literary landscape in the 21st century, and we're all very proud of you and very excited too. Um, but how how do you deal with all of the public attention personally, and does it take a toll on you? No, it pay, I pay absolutely no attention to it mm -hmm. at all, um, because one one has to understand a couple of things. One has to understand that fame is quite fleeting mm -hmm. and quite destructive if you pay attention to it. Um, I was joking the other day um, with a friend of mine uh, that I am so I you know so irritated mm -hmm. by two mm -hmm. things in the last two months. Yes. Um, one is how much 